We just spent quite literally almost two months building this engine, and now I have to tear the entire thing back almost all the way down to the bare block just to fix a couple problems that I should have caught earlier on. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be talking about all of the things that I did wrong while trying to build an engine by myself in my garage. Now, if you saw the last video, you already know that the engine that I built did not start. And it didn't start for a variety of reasons, but primarily because the crankshaft bearings were too tight. Now, in order to replace the bearings, I have to pull the crankshaft out. And in order to do that, I have to remove all of the piston connecting rods, the timing chain cover, and the harmonic balancer. But as with many mistakes, this has actually been a bit of a blessing in disguise. Because if we managed to get it started without making sure those bearings were the right size, we could have caused some pretty catastrophic damage. And thankfully, I've had a whole bunch of people reach out to me, which I cannot thank you guys enough. It's been amazing to see this overwhelming outpour of positivity and advice in response to my biggest failure yet on the channel, which makes me feel great. It keeps me motivated to keep going, and I cannot thank you guys enough for it. Now, fortunately, but also unfortunately, as a result of uploading these videos and having people reach out to me, I've been given some advice about other parts that I put on this engine that need to be fixed. So I'm briefly gonna go through and talk about everything that needs to be replaced, why it needs to be replaced, and what the plan is to replace it. Now, before I go into this list of everything that I need to replace, I need to give a big shout out to my friend Michael, who reached out through Facebook to tell me all of the things that I need to be aware of in these next coming videos. He's given me so much advice that's gonna be incredibly helpful in the entire future build of not only the engine, but the car as a whole. So if you're watching this, Michael, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You cannot ever know how much this means that you reached out, and I appreciate it so much. So on to the first order of business. I need to replace all of the crank bearings. And the reason I need to replace them is because even though the crank is standard sized, the bearings are supposedly standard sized, they were purchased in a very cheap kit that I do not believe actually gave me standard sized bearings. Now there's one other piece of why it could be wrong, and that's if I managed to get the main caps in the wrong order when I put them back on the engine. I don't think that happened, but it is possible, and it's something we need to check before we put any of those back on. Second thing that we're replacing, all of the piston rod bearings. Every single one of these is gonna get replaced. And again, that's because they came in a crappy eBay engine kit that I have learned since, thanks to all of your guys' comments, is not the place to buy parts. Obviously, eBay is a hit or miss kind of website, but for me, it's unfortunately been a big miss and a big expensive mistake. And something that I do really wanna point out is the fact that normally it was easy to identify cheap parts on eBay because they were inexpensive. But I think these manufacturers are getting a little bit smarter and they're just bumping the prices to make them look more legitimate. So I paid an exorbitant amount of money for an engine kit that was supposed to be really good and it ended up being just a remarketed, really, really cheap knockoff kit. So number two, piston rod bearings. All getting replaced because I can't trust what's in there right now. Next thing on our list, the oil filter. Now an oil filter is not something that I expected everybody to be so passionate about. I picked this one up from Walmart, it fit the engine, but everyone was up in arms about the fact that I used a Fram oil filter and they said, oh, use, you gotta use a Wix oil filter. So that's gonna be the next replacement. We're gonna put a Wix oil filter on it. Don't stress too much. I don't know why it's such a big problem, but you know what? We want a good, reliable engine. We're gonna use what's recommended as the good, reliable parts. Next thing that needs to be replaced is all of the seals and the gaskets. Now, that's not because they were necessarily bad. They were all Felpro gaskets, but you use them once, you take them off, you're supposed to replace them. That's what we're gonna do. We want this in pristine condition when we put it back together. So we are replacing all of the gaskets the second time around on this rebuild. Now, excuse me for a moment while I flip the engine over so I can talk about the rest of the things that need to be replaced. Well, now that we got her right side up and she's dripping oil all over the floor of my garage, we can talk about the other things that I need to take a deeper look at and very likely replace. So our next grouping of items is in the heads here. Something that we've already struggled with putting on. We broke head bolts, 
We had issues tightening all of the rockers down. They just overall have been an absolute pain. Now on top of that, after getting some advice about heads, I've been told that all of the exhaust valves, the intake valves, the springs, and the push rods probably need to be replaced. Now this has been an overwhelming piece of advice from so many people in the comments on the video talking about you need to double check the clearances, you gotta double check the valves, you gotta double check every single piece of those heads because you should never put heads on directly out of the bag from the shipment. Now I didn't know that, I had no idea and that's why I'm uploading these videos is to get some advice from you guys. And some people have been super, super helpful and positive about it. Some people have been pretty mean, I'm not gonna lie, I've gotten a lot of, oh this kid doesn't know what he's doing and you know what I don't I don't know what I'm doing and that's part of the fun of this process is learning I am I set out to learn how to do something new I'm trying it in my own garage what are you doing you're leaving mean comments on my YouTube videos it's not cool so anyway yes the valves both the exhaust and the intake valves are getting replaced the springs are being replaced as well as obviously all of the retaining clips and hardware that comes with the springs and then the push rods are also being replaced and they're gonna be measured with our new camshaft now you might be thinking, new camshaft, that that one was brand new and it was an Edelbrock camshaft. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe it was, we don't know for sure because apparently a lot of these eBay sellers will market something as an Edelbrock or a Holly part to try and charge you more for something that's really, really cheap. It's a really dirty practice and they have almost no liability as a result of it because they're selling from overseas. So there's not much that the United States can do about it. It's something that I didn't know. I learned about it again after putting all this together and I don't really wanna risk running a camshaft in there that's gonna break or flatten out or some other problem with it that is gonna make the engine not work. So yes, we are replacing the brand new camshaft that we just put in there. And I'm gonna talk about all of the new parts, the brand names, everything else that's gonna be going in this closer to the end of this video once we talk about why they need to be replaced. Another thing that needs to be replaced is the timing chain itself. Under that cover, I have a single link timing chain and a lot of people said put a double roller timing chain on there. They're just the ones that have two gears on each side, so two on the cam and two on the crank side. And those are supposed to hold up a little bit better over time. So we're gonna be replacing that as well. Back to the heads really quick, cause I forgot one piece of it. Everybody remembers the head bolts that snapped on these babies. That was a horrible video. I was very unhappy with that one. But I cannot stress to you enough how many comments I got from people saying, you should've used ARP bolts. They're expensive, but they're really good. You know what? Fine, I'm gonna listen to you. I'm gonna put ARP bolts on it. I don't care about the cost at this point. I want it to run properly. So we're gonna put some ARP bolts on there and hopefully, if all you guys are right, they will not snap when I put them on. <laughs> Speaking of the heads and the bolts, we're also gonna be putting proper aluminum head gaskets on, proper aluminum intake manifold gaskets as well. So everyone can stop commenting, oh, those are for iron intake manifolds and iron heads. Well, we got aluminum, we're gonna put the right gaskets on, don't worry. And then the last piece of the puzzle is what's dripping down right here, typical engine oil. I did not know this, and it's definitely a good thing that I learned it at this point before trying to run the engine, but there's actual engine break-in oil. And that oil seems to be a little bit thicker, coats a little bit better, helps maintain your friction across all of your bearings. I don't know the exact specifics of why it does what it does, but it's highly recommended to be used when you're running the engine for the first time. It helps make sure that when your bearings are properly sized, they're not getting ruined on first start. So we're gonna be using some break-in oil as well as obviously some zinc additive engine assembly lube when we put this all together for the second time. So now the really cool part of what we get to talk about, which is what am I replacing all of these parts with? We know they're bad, we know they're not reliable, so the best option for us is to make sure that we use parts that have warranties, have established brand names, and are bought directly from the sellers or the manufacturers that are most trusted in the automotive industry. So I've got a list here on my phone, I'm gonna go one by one through the list, we'll throw up some photos on screen as well as we talk about all of the different pieces that are gonna go back in this engine to make sure that it is bulletproof when we put it back in the car. So first off, for intake valves on our heads, we're doing a full set 
of Manly Racemaster intake valves for the small block Chevy. Manly is a very regarded name in the automotive industry. I'm gonna trust their parts. They're sold by Jags. I'm gonna trust Jags to make sure that if anything goes wrong, they will make it good. For exhaust valves on the heads, we're also going with a set of Manly exhaust valves for the small block Chevy. Same reasons, same parts, makes sense to use them together. For our valve springs, we're replacing them with a full kit of Summit Racing's valve springs. Very reputable company. They sell a ton of parts that I've put on for the suspension on this car already. I'm gonna trust Summit. They have always been good to me. Now, for a big piece of the puzzle, what are we gonna replace the camshaft with? I've done a lot of research since that last video went up, and again, got a lot of advice from people that said, hey, you might wanna consider spending a little extra money and upgrading to a roller camshaft. Now, right now in it is a hydraulic camshaft. It's, you know, pretty standard, but they have an absurd break-in procedure, uh, and they're also known to flatten out pretty easily if one little thing goes wrong. They're not exactly the most resilient camshafts in the world. Even the ones that are built by Edelbrock and other reputable companies are not really known as being the most forgiving. Now, because this is my first engine build and I don't want to tear it apart for a third time, we're going to spend the money and upgrade to a Howard Cams roller camshaft. Now, this is a retrofit kit. This is a 1975 block. They did not come with roller camshafts back in the day. So we're doing their retrofit kit in an attempt to make sure that this thing has a little bit more reliability and overall just runs so much better and so much longer once we get it in the car. Now that camshaft does come with the lifters in the kit, so we'll have everything all at once. There's no questioning what needs to be done there. Now something to keep in mind with the new camshaft is we're gonna have to put new push rods in. In order to do that, we're gonna have to measure them to get the exact sizing that we need. Now that's something I've never done before, so we're gonna have to make a video out of it. I've got the tools on order. They are coming to me as we speak so we can measure our own push rods and make sure that this engine is performing at the peak of its performance ability. Now for both our rod bearings and our main bearings, we are swapping those out with JEGS branded bearings. A lot of people also specifically recommended going with the JEGS bearings, so I'm gonna trust that and hope that these end up being exactly what we need to keep the rotating assembly going smoothly. We already talked about it, but the head bolts that are gonna go back in here are going to be official ARP head bolts bought from Summit, not from eBay. Uh, so we can make sure that they are good quality and exactly what we need on the engine. Now for the timing chain, we're gonna put the Edelbrock Double Roller Performer Link timing chain on there. Again, it's just the two gears, two sets of chains basically, keep it a lot stronger and seem to be a little bit tighter, so less slack overall in the chain. So hopefully that gives us a little bit better performance as well on the new setup. Head gaskets, let's talk about those because a lot of people had complaints about it that I was using iron focused head gaskets on aluminum heads. Now that's another call to how bad the eBay kit really was because these heads and the head gaskets came in the same kit. And if they are iron focused head gaskets and you're giving me aluminum heads in the kit, you're telling me you probably don't know what you're doing. And I trusted the seller to put the kit together properly and Obviously, don't do that. Don't follow in my footsteps. Do not buy parts off eBay. So we are replacing those with the Felpro Performance Permatorque MLS head gaskets. Those are ridiculously expensive. It's about $73 per head gasket. But again, we wanna make sure it works properly. We're gonna be using the right parts. Intake gaskets, a little bit less important, but still useful. We're gonna be using the Felpro HP intake gaskets for small block engines. They are said to be rated to work on aluminum heads. So if you know that to be true or not, let me know. Um, they're only 20 bucks, so it's not that much out of the bank to make sure that those are done properly. Uh, additionally, as a result of the camshaft, we have to get a camshaft retainer and a camshaft thrust button, which I didn't even know were things. And apparently you're even supposed to put them on the hydraulic camshafts, but are apparently required to be put on the roller camshafts, no matter what. Then as our last piece, obviously the oil filter, we're gonna upgrade to a Wix oil filter. I don't know what the big difference is between the two, but I have to assume Walmart branded stuff probably about the equivalent quality as eBay stuff. So you know what, fine. 
We're gonna upgrade, we're gonna go to the Wix filter. It's not an issue to me to change it out. We're replacing so many things anyway. A new oil filter is totally fine to be replaced. So that leaves us with the question of what is next for the engine build? What is our first attack here? And unfortunately, the next step is to take the whole thing apart again. We just spent quite literally almost two months building this engine, and now I have to tear the entire thing back almost all the way down to the bare block just to fix a couple problems that I should have caught earlier on. So if anything, this is kind of a PSA of, hey, don't buy cheap engine parts. Don't make the same mistakes that I have. Learn what you're doing before you do it the best that you can. I really thought that I gave it my all to figure out what I needed to do about building an engine. And I knew the fundamentals of it, but unfortunately I did not know the specifics and where to get good parts from. And unfortunately that has been a $1,700 mistake out of my bank account. But in the end, I hope it will all be worth it to get this thing done and getting it running once and for all, because I know that the feeling of getting this thing running and driving it for the first time ever is gonna be absolutely priceless. So again, I wanna give a quick shout out to everyone that commented and gave me advice on what I should be doing on this build. I can't thank you guys enough. There's only a few ways to really learn the specifics about how to work on engines and learning from people who have experience like you guys that watch the videos has been absolutely awesome for me. I can't thank you enough. To everyone who is just tuning in from this video or my last couple videos that have blown up, thank you for subscribing to the channel. The growth has been absolutely phenomenal. I'm so excited for where this channel is going and how much I still have to do and where we already are in the growth of this community community and the channel as a whole. So if you guys are enjoying the content and you're excited to see where we end up with the second rebuild of this 350, I hope you guys subscribe. I hope you guys join me along the way and I hope you are entertained for every step of the process as we go through and rebuild this Chevy 350 for the second time.